I went to Harry Potter World for the first time and I wanted merch. And I found this really, really cool shirt that says platform nine and three quarters, but it it's for kids. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's your girl, Emily Curl at iHeartRadio, and welcome back to my virtual studio. She's a singer releasing her own music, and she's also the star of the freeform show, Cruel Summer. Let's welcome in actress and artist, Olivia Holt. Hi, Olivia, how are you? Hi, I'm so good, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for being here. We have a lot to talk about, but first of all, congratulations, season two of Cruel Summer, but also new music. You're busy right now. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm very, very grateful and so excited. It is a really awesome, awesome year so far. Let's start with music, your new single, Next. It is such a bop, and honestly, it's gonna be my summer anthem because I feel like that's where I'm at <laughs> in my personal life. <laughs> co-written with Good. Megan Kainer. <laughs> what was that like, co-writing the song with her? I feel like saying a dream is just an understatement because obviously she's such a legend in the pop realm, and she's also just such an awesome human being, like so down to earth, married, has a kid, and like just, you can tell like her love for music is infinite, and and um, I've always like have had a dream of working with her. And so the fact that she's a part of this project is just incredibly surreal. How did you know that you wanted to lead with Next? You know, sort of like you, <laughs> where you're like, I feel like this is like my anthem. I wanted a song like that. Like I wanted something that sort of captured every element and essence of who I am and what I was going through and where I felt like I was at in that stage of my life. This was pre-pandemic. I was pitched the song. And I was like, this is so, like it has every element and aspect I could possibly want. It, it had the organic instruments that I'm such a sucker for and like so drawn to. And it also just had this liberating feeling and that was the space that I was in. I felt incredibly liberated. I've never felt like more myself. I was sort of on this like weird journey of like figuring out who I was in, as an individual and then also trying to figure out what my next step was in my career. And I've been making music since I was 15, 16 years old and I'm entering my mid twenties now and I'm in such a different headspace. And I felt like I wanted something that sort of captured that and that was next for me. And then obviously the bonus was Megan Trainer being a part of the project, but it just felt like it hit every single area of, of what I was searching for for so long. And yeah, it just feels like a new era of music for me. And I'm incredibly excited and happy that that was the start of that trajectory, you know? And one thing the music video had was it had a lot of bomb outfits and you have such cool style. <laughs> <laughs> so we Thanks. wanted to do a little closet tour inspired by some different prompts that we have ready for you. And the first one we wanted to start with, obviously, was we need the perfect outfit that describes next. Okay, so I couldn't decide on what to choose for the inspo for next or what I would wear for inspired by next. So I chose two. Okay. And in the video, I feel like it's all about like, you know, that liberating feeling and wanting it to feel effortless and timeless. And I didn't realize how much I loved pink. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the color pink apparently because that's all I'm wearing in the music video. But um I decided to choose a little bit more of like sophisticated looks and like stuff that felt like a fit versus like, like just like pulling together random pieces. So the first okay. one is a little simple, but it's these cool corduroy pants, just like a matching pink top that is a crop. So when you wear it, this is sort of the vibe. It's like a more casual version of the video, right? Like it totally is. Down. Yeah. This is like the everyday exactly. version of next. So this is kind of the same vibe. It's pants. They're a little silky. So it's a little Hugh Hefner action going on here, which I don't know how anybody feels about that, but it is kind of hilarious. And then like just a matching set, the little a little button up to go over it. You can place like a bralette underneath. And now would this be like a weekend outfit for you? What's the occasion here for this one? I feel like this is more of definitely a weekend look. It definitely like screams vacay. <laughs> You know, like, but it, but it was like a pair of sandals or, you know. I wear a lot of like open jackets and bralettes in the next video, as well as like, just like a matching like pant to go with it. And I feel like this kind of screams that. And it's got a lot of cool colors, like pink and gold and yellow. Wait, can we see that one up close? I want to see the colors on it. 
fun. But you do say you're a mom jean enthusiast. I love the I jeans do. that you're wearing now. Okay, so tell me, what is your favorite pair of mom jeans? These. These are high-waisted mom jean Levi's. I'm obsessed with any sort of mom jean, but like they fit really good. The bottom is just sort of like this like free living, free living pants. They're so good too, yeah. Like a light wash. These I wear every single day. Where do you find your jeans? I have to try them on. I'm usually a sucker for online shopping. Retail therapy is a blessing and a curse for me, but I have to try jeans on because I'm very particular about my jeans and the way that they fit. And even with these, like sometimes like at the end of the day, they're so loose and I feel like I'm constantly like pulling them up, but I love the way that they fit. I love like, I, I feel like I need to see them on and to walk around in them and to know that they like feel good for like a full day, you know? So you're wearing these a lot this summer. What else is your go-to summer accessory? <laughs> this is so, this is fun for me watching the full rack. <gasps> bucket yeah, hat. The bucket hat. You can wear a bucket hat because I have to be really careful of the sun because my skin is really sensitive to the sun, but you can kind of wear it however you want. Wow. And it sort of goes with anything. And you can just yeah. throw it on, but you can also throw it off. Who is like your street style inspo? Like who do you like see and you're like, I love that style? Hailey Bieber. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was just about to say this gives me Hailey Bieber vibes. <laughs> She has such an incredible style and I love that she is so like sophisticated but also so effortless and like has this like cool like tomboy side of her that's also like reaching the realm of feminine and like it's wild how she does it but like I definitely like her street style inspires me a lot because I feel like we all want to feel comfortable in what we're wearing and but we also still want to look our best and we want to look cute and i feel like there's a way to like find a balance and i feel like she does a really really good job at it so now for you this is kind of changing the game here but what is a, a piece from your closet that makes you feel really powerful really badass something that you love i found this at a flea market and it is a vintage men's oversized christian dior letterman jacket and it's so cool. It has the Dior embroidering right here. Really no, cool. I'm drooling. I love it. It's just like cool. I'm obsessed with oversized stuff. I love the way that it fits. I love the style and I feel like it kind of, you could throw it on with the dress. You could throw it on with like jeans, sneakers, and it still like makes you feel like confident and also it just makes you like, I'm also like, I get cold really easily. So I need a good so jacket, need a jacket. And I feel like this is like, this is the one, but I'm obsessed with this piece and it definitely makes me feel badass wherever I go. Okay, so Olivia, what about, what is something you bought as a joke, but now you seriously love it? I am the ultimate Harry Potter fan. And I went to Harry Potter World for the first time and I wanted merch. I wasn't really connecting with any of the merch that I saw in any of the stores. And I was like, I can't leave without some sort of something on my body. And I found this really, really cool shirt that says platform nine and three quarters. It's super minimalistic, simple, which I like, but it it's for kids. <laughs> it's for kids. So I was like, I can maybe wear it as a crop top. And so oh my I God, you it. have a crop top. Oh. <laughs> I bought it kind of as a joke because I was with my friends and we were like, this would be really hilarious, but it works as a crop top, but it, I can show you. No. Kids extra small. <laughs> and like, I feel like it looks a little retro, which I love. Our next one, this is going in a different direction, is what is your go-to date night top? Okay, my go-to date night top. I actually got this pretty recently. And I love this because it sort of sports is like a halter top. Like just sort of like, so I'm sort of into like the brown, like chocolate colors recently. And I feel like, you know, if you're going on a date, you can start off wearing this with like cool, like black slacks or a, a, a nice skirt or something. And then, you know, if you're going to a nice dinner, you can just sort of like throw this matching. It's also really nice because like the back, you can't tell because it's not on my body right now, but like when I have it on, you can kind of see like the sliver of my back right here. And it's really like, it's sexy and I love the color. It's like simple and it's also, I'm a sucker for crop stuff and so you get to see like a little midriff here if you're wearing jeans or whatever this never lets me down 
I really love this. It piece. never fails you. Okay, so next one we have what is a piece that describes both you and Kate from Cruel Summer? Okay, this might be a little too on the nose, but I have this 1990s bodysuit. <laughs> My yes. hair is still on the nose. I've had this for ages. I don't even remember when I got it or where I even got it. I was born in the 1990s and Kate lived through the 1990s. So I thought that this was a perfect piece to sort of describe the two of us because I don't really have a lot of her style because um, she has like, she goes through three very drastic different styles throughout the um mm -hmm throughout the season. So I felt like this was perfect to describe. It's like, it definitely is like a 90s vibe with like the close turtleneck and then, you know, the the the, the quarter length sleeve, sleeve and then yeah. the, the bodysuit situation. But like, I actually don't think I've ever even worn this. Speaking of Cool Summer, this is Freeform's most watched series ever, which is amazing. Like, does that feel real? Like when you think about that? It's kind of wild. I, we shot this show during the pandemic. There was a part of me that was really nervous about how you know we were going to execute it because there were just so many new elements and new things that we had to adjust to and so you don't know how people are going to perceive it so you just do your best and then they put it out in the world and you get to see how people respond and i'm so grateful that people have responded so well to it so let's talk about what is the best outfit that you like to wear in the recording studio so i know that we went through an entire pandemic and everyone was really into that tie-dye situation i'm still mm. not over it I'm obsessed with tie-dye and I also like if I'm gonna spend like eight or more hours in a studio if I'm writing or if I'm cutting vocals or if I'm just in that space I want to be comfortable and I want to wear tie-dye <laughs> so I have this really cool like tie-dye like oversized sweatshirt with yes. matching pants <laughs> okay this looks so cozy too it's the coziest and you can literally throw on like a pair of white sneaks now you kind of touched on this, but like what exactly goes into a studio day? I got into songwriting maybe like two years ago and I was in sessions every single day for like a whole year and I had never experienced anything like that. And so I definitely got to understand like my voice more and not just like my singing voice, but like having a voice on what I want to say lyrically, what I want to do sonically, yeah. and like being in that environment with people who also do that every single day, having that collaborative experience is electric. There's there's nothing like it. Doing that for a year, like you think about the Olivia who walked in there the first day and was like, okay, I'm you know I'm, I'm gonna practice. I want to get really good at this. To the end of that, what was the biggest change you noticed in yourself, or and maybe in your ability? I was terrified my first day. I never looked at myself as a songwriter. I never had had experience being in a studio writing with other songwriters. Maybe like one-offs every now and then, but to sort of have the headspace going in knowing that I was gonna start my songwriting journey was like absolutely terrifying. And I was intimidated. I was people who literally do this every single day and I just like to make music and I love to sing. And I knew I had some sort of vision, I just needed I needed to curate like a team of people around me to help execute it in the way that I wanted it to be executed. So I had to let go of that fear that I had of not being able to give a good concept or to come up with an idea or a lyric and just like throw it out there. And if it sucks, then we laugh about it and then we move on and we just make the thing better. A year later, I, I've never felt stronger or more confident in like what I have to say or the ideas that I have. And even if I walk into a session today and I have a concept and that I say it out loud and I don't really get a reaction, I'm like, cool, so it sucks, so we're gonna move on <laughs> and it's fine. Like that's the part of collaborating that's the best, you know, yeah. you have to be honest with each other and you have to respect each other and it has to be a safe space because you're using that space as a soundboard. All right, really quickly, what is something in your closet that you cannot live without? You, you might hate me for this, but... It's the Harry Potter shirt again? No. <laughs> no, simple white tee, baby. This is the only thing that I need in my life. If, like, fashion becomes, like, non-existent, I'm cool with just wearing a simple white tee. And I have a... With the mom outfit. jeans, it's a vibe. That you with mom... Yes, it's a total vibe. And I'm, I have a million of these. I feel like I'm that girl when, like, you open the closet door, it's, like, just all white simple tees. And I'm like... What's the matter with me? Why can I not just like stick with one or two? I have maybe like 50. 50 different versions of the same color. It's insane. Okay, last one for you, Olivia. What is a piece that is most sentimental to you? I am a Yankees fan, diehard Yankees fan. A lot of people would disagree with me and I'd just say, hey, 
it's all good. We don't need to fight about it, but I disagree. <laughs> I have been a really big Yankees fan since I was a kid. My granddad was the ultimate Yankees fan and sort of got me into baseball. And it's not that I necessarily am obsessed with the sport. It's just the team that I love. I um, have had Yankees merch all the time growing up. My granddad, before he passed away, gave me a really cool hat. But um, my boyfriend, in the fourth grade, I guess, was a Yankees fan as well. And he found this really cool Yankees jacket. And he wore this in like the fourth oh. grade. So I don't know how many years ago that was, but this is like... Wait, that's his actual jacket? This is his actual and, jacket. Oh, and, and he, he like found it in his stuff. He found it in his stuff. He knows that I'm a Yankees fan. And it is like a little oversized. It's the perfect fit. I wear it with everything, everything. I love it. I feel like, you know, the girl always wants to like have like a sweatshirt or like a jacket to like steal. But like I stole what I could have never thought. Like I could have never made this up. You know, I am obsessed with it. It's so great. It looks so cute. Anyway. I love that story. That's amazing. It's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. And it's from the fourth grade. And now before we let you go, obviously we're so excited for new music. What else can we look forward to from you this year? I am putting out more music that I am so excited about. I feel really confident about this new era of music in my life. And I've solidified my sound, what I want to say, my vision. And I'm just excited for people to go along the journey with me but we can't wait to be there. Olivia Hall, thank you so much for being here. Thank can't you. wait to see you. Hopefully next time we get to see these pieces in real life at our iHeart offices. 100%. <laughs> I'll just bring my rack. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you stream all of Olivia Holt's music on iHeartRadio and we will see you next time. Bye guys. Bye guys.